Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times on this glorious Sunday morning, July 3rd, 2022. This might be the single most gorgeous day of 2022 on this Sunday morning, and I'm actually uh, getting ready to uh, teach a five-year-old child how to fish. I will be hanging out with a five-year-old today because I'm in love with his haughty mother. Uh, anyway, but, uh, you know, I haven't done any tr Donald Trump bashing in a while, or, and uh, have I ever mentioned in my entire life the January 6th riots or any of that? One of the single biggest distractions on the planet. Every once in a while, a short, sweet uh, thing comes out. Uh, some Trump bashing that uh, really appeals to me. This might be the most intelligent, to the point, all you need to say about it. This is from The Week. This is from William Falk, the editor-in-chief of The Week magazine with his short, sweet essay uh, celebrating the 4th of July called The Turning Point. The Turning Point. Take it away, brother. Every four years, pundits proclaim that this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Goddamn wind is picking up. I don't know how bad this is going to be on the microphone. In 2016, we now know it was actually true. The election of Donald Trump to the presidency was an asteroid strike that profoundly altered America's political and cultural landscape. Six years ago, Donald Trump offered a devil's bargain to evangelical Christians if they gave a thrice-married, biblically illiterate New York City libertine their vote, he would deliver Supreme Court justices who would overturn Roe and promote a conservative Christian agenda. Trump delivered with help from Mitch McConnell and Democrats who stayed home in 2016 or voted for Jill Stein because of their distaste for Hillary Clinton. If I had not stayed home, I would have voted for Jill Klein. Uh, anyway, so I stand guilty as charged, although I'm not a Democrat. Anyway. Trump appointed three Federalist Society minted justices who last week gleefully erased Roe, triggering a war between the states over abortion whose consequences we can only dimly glimpse. And the number one story in the mainstream media today was about the new civil war uh, forming that this uh, newest kangaroo court up at the top is causing in America. Uh, that th this, this Supreme Court could be heading us into civil war. And I do not think that is an exaggeration in the number one story in the mainstream media. Anyway, but Donald Trump's legacy goes far beyond the 6-3 court now detonating decades of precedence. The January 6th committee hearings have further revealed the 45th president in all his plate-flinging, foaming-at-the-mouth, narcissistic glory, his contempt for democracy, 
institutions and traditions. His use of lies, intimidation, and violence to achieve his ends. His animating belief that winning is all that matters. Over four exhausting years, our titular national leader's madness infected the country like a virus. Threats and acts of violence against political enemies have become routine. Hatred, bullying, and alternative facts have been validated. Meanness is in the air. The red-blue divide Trump deliberately deepened feels increasingly irreparable. In the immediate future, there will be prosecutions of Trump allies, allies and perhaps Trump himself. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Anyway, and then payback investigations by Republicans, and if they control the House, the impeachment of Joe Biden. Beyond that, we can count on nothing except that Donald Trump's poisonous impact on this nation will linger long after he is dead. Thank you. What was this? Uh, what was your name, brother? Amen. To William Falk, editor in chief of the Week magazine. And uh, while I'm on this, uh, as long as I'm sitting here on this gorgeous day waiting for the five year old and his beautiful mama to get back from Walmart with a tube of crickets. Uh, I was thinking about, and I still might do it, thinking about getting in a friendly debate with my old buddy Vegematic from his latest rant, uh, which I think like 75 people on the hum humans on the planet have listened to. If you haven't heard Veg's latest rant, go over there and and listen to it. it, it it's a good one, but uh, you will find that some people took some... Uh, that's not, that's not the five-year-old fisherman. Uh, I had some fun debating a, a few points with Veg in, in that, uh, you, you know, having fun with his comment that we actually made progress in the 20th century, which of course was the most uh, well, it, 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 progress in the 20th century. But I know what you mean, Veg. And then he made some point, what was it about the reason there will be no fossil fuels? I mean, the reason there will be no tomorrow is because of the fossil fuels we are burning today. And I corrected Veg or d debated with, with, my, with my brother. Fossil fuels have nothing to do with it from this point forward. From this point forward, uh, there will be no tomorrow, uh, whether or not we keep burning fossil fuels today, and obviously we're not going to stop. Uh, he mentioned uh, the obvious facts was there are no, was it solutions or answers? Uh, my comment uh, to that, there are in fact two answers, keep your pecker in your pants and get out there and enjoy it while you still can. But one thing I want to comment is I think the most appropriate to this uh, little letter I just read. And uh, th this is a mistake that I think that, that a lot of uh, people, uh, particularly lefties, and I don't think, uh, as long as I don't apply the LD appellation to uh, I, I think Veg will agree he is a uh, he is a lefty, and that's this 
this old saw that the only people who voted for Donald Trump are ignorant people. And of course, he pointed out uneducated Southerners. Uh oh, here's the five year old, so I need to wrap this up. But uh, it is not the uneducated, dumb, redneck Southerners we need to worry about. It is the people like my best friend in the world, a college educated, obviously intelligent, articulate, well read, upper middle class female. My, as I say, my, my best friend on the planet, there's nothing ignorant uh, about this woman. Uh, the last person who should ever e even consider voting for Donald Trump voted for Donald Trump in 2016, voted for Donald Trump in 2020, and she will vote for Donald Trump again in 2024 if he is A, still alive, B, not in prison, and still eligible to vote. This uh, intelligent, articulate, college-educated, upper-middle-class, professional white woman will vote for Donald Trump a third time. She is who we need to be terrified about, not some dumb redneck trailer trash in, in, in some uh, Appalachian uh, strip mine. Anyway, Veg, that's just my two cents worth, but I did enjoy your rant, and folks, go out there and listen to that rant, but I gotta wrap it up because I have to go spend the day with a five-year-old and his haughty mother teaching a five-year-old how to fish, which is the probably the best thing I can do for any five-year-old is teach them how to fish. I highly suggest you get out there and teach any five-year-old that you know how to fish and garden. My guys. All right, little dog, they're back. Let's go fishing. Fishing with the little bundles of joy.